So is the Conservative Party playing with political fire by supporting the trucker convoy or not? Can they unite around a new leader and what kind of party are they? Let's find out. Joining me now are two Conservative MPs, Marilyn Gladue and Dr. Stephen Ellis. Uh, first of all, great to see both of you. I don't know how much sleep you've had after a tumultuous week on a lot of fronts. Um, so thanks for being here. Marilyn Gladue, let me just start well, with you. How does your party reconcile right now uh, support for the trucker convoy, right? And, and we're talking about your interim leader. As you know, and I've spoken to you about it, the organizers, Canada Unity, the ones who are collecting the $10 million and the signatures, are openly saying they want to overthrow the government. It's still on their website. Are you lending credibility to this kind of group, and what message are you sending to Canadians by doing so? Well, actually, I did go to their webpage after we talked the other day to see, you know, what they did say. And they're calling for the government to stop violating their constitutional rights um, and to resign otherwise. Now, obviously, uh, there are many that would see that as an extreme view. But what we're doing is calling on the prime minister to find a solution and to find a path forward to this. This has been going on. It's been an incredibly long week in Ottawa and uh, you know he needs to step forward and uh, we're willing to work with him. Our leader said she would be work with him on trying to find a solution but we we really need to end you know this protest. I, I just I don't want to gloss over that I know you said you, you went on the website the website's clear they have a document it's called the memorandum of understanding if the elected officials both of you don't resign they have won a committee between Canada Unity the Senate and the Governor General to form a committee to get rid of the mandates and essentially govern the country. You would be resigning. It's it's important Evan, not. Many it, of the people important. who are out on the street are not of this opinion. Many of them are just truckers that lost their jobs. Not everybody's part of that of the organizing organization. No, but I have people Madam from Gladi my riding here that I talked to. I, I agree. Not part Look, of that. They just want their jobs back. But but I think that's different, and we should be very careful. Uh, obviously, many many people who may have the frustrations and may support the truckers haven't signed this. But you are an elected official. Is it naive to think that you can say, well, I'm not lending credibility to the people who are financially and politically benefiting by standing with them? You're giving them a halo yeah, effect. We've been clear about what we support. We, we don't support the vaccine mandates that cause these truckers to lose their jobs and drive up the supply chain costs, which is driving the prices of groceries up, and you know all of the misery that goes along with that. We've definitely denounced the violence, the you know the incidents, the, the racism, the uh, the things that have gone on, and have called for the truckers to do the same. Okay, but uh, oh, let me go to Dr. Ellis. If conservative MPs and your interim leaders out there supporting them, they're taking pictures with them, they're urging them on. And literally the mayor of the city said it's a disgrace when a number of MPs and a conservative senator was out there. So I'm, how do you want a peaceful end to a demonstration that your own interim leader is supporting and the demonstrators themselves say we're not leaving? So can you be specific? Who should but, the olive branch be offered to? Is it the organizers? And how do you square the circle of supporting them and then saying I want it to end? You know, I think the big thing that we understand here is that Everyone has the right to a peaceful and respectful protest. And I would suggest, I don't know, uh, that the, the members from my party who are out there speaking to truckers, perhaps are people that they know, people that they feel comfortable with, that, that aren't violent and have a, a valid beef with what's going on. Uh, and I think that's important. I have certainly never heard in, in any discussions with my colleagues at caucus or privately that anyone on our team would ever consider that that someone should overthrow the government. I mean, that's, right. you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, but to me, that's just inflammatory, and that's not uh, the 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 point here. The point here is that no, but, but sir, people I, came I have to. Be, I, I'm going to push back. And, I, I want to yeah, be robust. Ahead. It's not. Inf if you're suggesting it's inflammatory for me to say, sir, this is, we can't ignore the reality. There's big money here. There's ten million dollars no, flowing into an organization who who put the trucks there, who are benefiting from the trucks and who are getting political support to do so, sir. I, I'm, I, 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 I respectfully, I think this is not I'm inflammatory, not this is reality. I think, Evan, the point I'm trying to make is that suggesting that the people, you know, on the Conservative Party who may be out there supporting or speaking, I don't know if they're supporting, that's, that's perhaps not the right word, that are engaging with truckers 
are the same people that want to overthrow whatever that means, uh, the government. I'm not sure they're the same people, and that's what I would say is inflammatory right. to to use that as insuinating that they're the same people. Right. I don't. Uh, and, and I don't where, think that they are, the and I can't imagine. Prime Minister in all of this. Where is the Prime Minister? He knew they were coming. He did nothing to get a plan in place to keep this from developing. We've had lots of people come and protest on the Hill, lots of extreme views on the left and the right. But, you know, now that they're here, he has been crickets on this whole thing, and he needs to step forward and, and start a diplomatic, peaceful resolution. Let me go back to you, Dr. Ellis. Uh, again, just because you said that you think everyone wants this protest to end peacefully, CTV News and the Globe and Mail obtained an internal email from your new interim leader, Candace Bergen, who says the opposite. She said, I don't think we should be asking them, the protesters, to go home. We need to turn this into the Prime Minister's uh, problem. Sir, is your party using the protest to score political points? You know, I don't believe that there are people in our party that, that don't want this to end peacefully. Uh, you know, that, that's very, I'll use the term un-Canadian. Canadians, as you know, Evan, have been peacemakers around the world, uh, starting back with, uh, with Lester B. Pearson, of course. And I think that that's really, really important that we have a history of that. And that's the style of life that we want to lead here in Canada, that, right. that people have the ability to respectfully protest. And, and again, and when they don't, we'll call them out on that, as, as members of our party certainly have. Let's go to a different topic, Dr. Ellis, which is your party's now, as some say, is in an identity crisis. Uh, you dumped Aaron O'Toole, uh, Andrew Scheer. And what's your sense of, of what the message Conservatives are sending to, to, to millions of voters across the country who voted for your party? Uh, obviously, your own party has rejected the vision of Aaron O'Toole. What is the Conservative Party of Canada now? You know, right now, in my view, the Conservative Party of Canada is the government in waiting. Uh, we represent all parts of Canada with all different points of view. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, uh, across our party, we're representing many, many different values. And of course, when you put all those values and, and ideas together, sometimes it does get messy. And that's okay because we want to ensure that we are representing the points of view of all Canadians. Okay, um, but it wasn't clearly good enough to keep Aaron O'Toole. So there, there's clearly dissension in there because you ousted your leader, Marilyn Gladue. It's hard to put a, a fresh po coat of blue paint over that. If there's so much internal division, what message does that send to Canadians? Well, I think that, you know, the, the fractions were clear in the media, but as soon as Candace Bergen was named our interim leader, the mood totally changed in our caucus, and everybody is very happy to be behind her. And I think we're returning to our grassroots. We have always been a grassroots movement, and the policies of the grassroots are clear. We're the party of fiscal responsibility. We're the party of the rule of law, social compassion, environmental stewardship, sovereignty of Canada, standing with our allies. That's who the Conservative Party has so always So what will been. happen, so and I'm just, uh, some of the divisive issues for Aaron O'Toole, let's be frank, where he put a price on carbon. A lot of your MPs have hated it. Uh, does that survive? Well, I think that's the discussion that needs to be held under the new leader, because um, whenever you're going to look at your policies, we obviously reflected on, on what resonated and what didn't, and there was definitely an issue over the carbon tax. Now, certainly everyone was behind meeting the 2030 Paris targets and getting to net zero by 2050, and it's really a discussion about how we want to get there. Marilyn Gladue, Stephen Ellis, I, I really appreciate both of you after a, a very wild week for your party, and frankly, in the country, uh, we always appreciate your voice. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Evan. Evan. Have a great day.